Hi guys, uh, the focus of today's video is on explaining what is a top heavy gyro compass. This should not be the first video on gyro compass that you are watching. I have previously made about 5 or 6 odd videos on gyro compass. The links to those videos are in the description section below. So make sure you watch those videos before you watch this video because you need to have a basic understanding of some of the terms associated with the gyro compass before you start watching this video. Um, I'll explain a few terms that I've explained before like gyroscopic inertia and gyroscopic precession because it is essential uh, to understand those terms to understand how a top heavy gyro compass works. Uh, in today's video I will talk about top heavy gyro compass and in my next video I'll talk about bottom heavy gyro compass so watch out for that video as well and make sure you watch both the videos to understand the difference between the two. Uh, as you probably know that the function of a gyro compass is to point north uh, so that uh, we can use it for steering and sailing purposes so for course keeping and for taking bearing purposes when I say north here I mean true north uh, which is the fictional direction of 000, zero, zero degrees. Why I say fictional direction is because 000 is uh, used as a reference point for course measurement or for steering purposes. Ideally, the magnetic compass uses magnetic north, but the problem with magnetic north is that it keeps shifting and it is not uh, at one steady point. So we can't use magnetic compass as the primary means of steering and sailing. So for the purposes of today's video, uh, I have uh, shown you what I mean when I say true north. So I mean this direction here, true north. And once you understand that that is the north, I'm going to change the angle of the camera and bring the camera in front of the gyroscope to show you how the gyroscope will move uh, due to precession and the forces that act on it. All right, so I keep talking about precession. So let me show you first what is precession and also let me explain what is inertia or gyroscopic inertia so that you can understand what happens. So remember the role of the gyroscope is to convert it into a gyro compass. So to convert a gyroscope into a gyro compass, uh, we need to fulfill three elements. The first one is to make it horizontal and point towards true north, which is the simplest thing to achieve. Then we have to make it north seeking and then we have to make it north settling. So in today's video, I'll talk about two of the elements. I'll talk about making the gyroscope spin axis horizontal and making it north seeking and uh, then I will uh, in the end I will talk a bit about north settling uh, but I'll talk more about north settling in my next video when I talk about bottom heavy gyro compass. Alright so let me show you what is inertia first. So the property of inertia is that if a gyroscope is made to point in a specific direction it should point towards that direction unless acted upon by a force. So you can see here a gyroscope if once the, the rotor achieves its maximum momentum, so think of it like a spinning top. A spinning top has a heavy center in the middle and based on the mass of that heavy center, it needs to attain a, a, a maximum RPM uh, depending on the mass. So that's the moment of inertia. So depending on the mass of this rotor, once it attains its maximum RPM, if I make it point towards one direction, it should continuously point towards that direction. That is inertia. But you can see in this case as well, it is drifting away from that direction, although it has not reached its maximum RPM. Um, but even though if it reaches maximum RPM, it drifts out of that particular direction. Why it does so is because the gyroscope is placed on the Earth's surface. Whether we use it on the ship, uh, we are the ship is actually on the Earth's surface. And because the Earth is slowly revolving around its axis, uh, there is Coriolis force and there is that movement of the Earth. Uh, on top of that, the ship is moving and it is interacting with the uh, seawater around it. So there are hydrodynamic forces. So a lot of forces are acting on the gyroscope. So that's why the gyroscope continuously the forces act on it. And the gyroscope cannot keep pointing towards that one particular direction which we want it to do so. It starts precessing out. That is the word we use. What is precession? Precession means that if I apply a force in one direction, it moves in a direction 90 degree away from the direction of the force. So if I apply it here, it goes this way. If I apply it here, this goes this way. If I apply it here, it goes down. If I apply it here, it goes up. Right? So the fact that the uh, direction of movement is 90 degrees away from the direction of force is called precession. So I've explained gyroscopic inertia and precession in this video. If you want more explanation, watch my previous videos. You'll get an understanding there. Uh, this is enough for you to understand today's video. So let's start with what is a top heavy gyro compass. 
So like I said, to convert a gyroscope into a gyro compass, you need to fulfill three criteria. The first one is to make it horizontal and point towards a particular direction. So how we make it do that is we construct a gyroscope and we make it point towards the true north. You can actually make it point towards any direction you want, but only in this direction of true north, which is the objective for course keeping and measurement, we attach two weights to it at the two ends of the spin axis. So this is the spin axis, the steel drum on which it is rotating. This, this spin axis is the spindle on which the steel drum is rotating. So on two ends of the spin axis, we attach two weights from here. All right. And those are cylinders, there are ballistic cylinders with mercury filled in it. If you know, want to know what it looks like, you can watch my one of the videos which I have made on parts of the gyro compass. In that I have shown you what the cylinders look like. So the two cylinders are attached on the two ends and it is filled with mercury. And only when the gyroscope is made horizontal, pointing towards true north, the two weights are in balance. If the spin axis moves out of the true north direction, the weights become unequal because due to gravity, the mercury will flow towards the end which is downwards whether it is this end whether it is this end all right it could be not it could be this end here the north end or it could be the south end doesn't matter so if if the north end goes up mercury will flow from the north end to the south end and similarly if the south end uh, goes up the mercury will flow from south end to north end so why we use mercury and not water because uh, the water may leak from the cylinders and damage the electrical components that are associated with the gyro compass and also water will evaporate with time so you cannot have water all the time so that's why we use mercury so let me show you what happens next so once we make it point horizontal we make it point towards the true north we make it horizontal we keep it horizontal here the weights are in absolute balance with each other now what happens is due to the earth's movement coriolis force ship's interaction uh, the gyroscope does recess out of the true north and it goes eastwards as you can see the direction east is this way it goes eastwards and it goes upwards as soon as it goes upwards, mercury will flow from the north end towards the south end, making the south end heavier. So a weight will act on it. As soon as the weight acts on it, you can see how the gyroscope axis recesses back towards the true north. All right, so of course, um, I need to give it its maximum RPM. And it's still not the maximum RPM, but as soon as it goes eastwards and upwards, the mercury flows, making this end heavier. And you see how the end came back towards the true north. And if it goes westwards, it goes downwards, this end becomes heavier and again it processes back towards true north. So I'll show it to you again. So as it soon as it goes westwards and downwards, mercury will flow towards this end due to gravity and it brings it back to north. If it goes eastwards and upwards, mercury will flow at the south end making this end heavier and again processes it back to the north direction. This is the north seeking element of a top heavy gyro. All right, so mercury flows towards the end, which is downwards. Again, bringing it back. Or if it goes eastwards and upwards, then here, bringing it back again. So it keeps coming back to the north direction. Now for this to work, the spin axis has to move in a certain direction only. So you could see that I'm trying to spin it in an anti-clockwise fashion. It looks anti-clockwise from my angle of view, so it is anti-clockwise. So only if it is spinning in an anti-clockwise fashion, this mercury flows with the gravity and come brings it back. But however, you will see if I make it spin clockwise, if the same thing now goes upwards and I apply a force here, it goes further away from the north. It goes further away, you can see. If it goes downwards on the western side and I put more weight here, it goes away from the north. All right, it goes away from the north. It's coming back towards me. So clearly the top heavy gyro model has a flaw. For it to work, the spin, the gyroscope or the spin motor of the gyroscope has to spin in a particular direction. In this case, of course, it is anti-clockwise. If I'm spinning it clockwise, the model of the gyroscope, the top heavy gyro is not working because if the mercury is flowing with gravity, making an end heavier, uh, it has to process it back to north. It cannot take it away further from north. So that was working only when I was spinning it anti-clockwise. So this was a generic flaw in the top heavy model which was using mercury as weight. So in my next video I'll show you what is a bottom heavy gyro and how they addressed this flaw of a top heavy gyro and uh, created the north seeking element uh, using certain other weight mechanism and towards the end of that video I'll also talk about the north settling aspect of the gyroscope. So I'll finish my video here guys. Thank you for watching and let me know what you thought about the video. Bye.